the founder of France's far-right National Front, FN, party has hit out at his daughter, the current leader, as a rift widens over a remark he made, which was condemned as anti-Semitic. Jean-Marie Le Pen said he was very hurt after Marine Le Pen denounced what she called a political error. It comes after Mr. Le Pen pledged in a video to make an oven load of his critics, including a Jewish singer. The FN finished top in France in last month's European Parliament elections. Correspondents say Marine Le Pen is trying to rid her party of its racist reputation as she looks for allies in the European Parliament. The FN's website has stopped hosting a video blog produced by Mr. Le Pen amid outrage over his use of the word phony, meaning an oven batch of loaves in a controversial video interview. He made the comment when talking about French singer Patrick Bruel, who is Jewish. Mr. Le Pen, currently honorary president of the FN, has previous convictions for inciting racial hatred. He was fined 1.2 meters francs, 183,200 euros, 149,000 pounds after calling the Nazi gas chambers just to detail in the history of World War II in 1996. Later he was stripped of his parliamentary immunity as an weapon fined in Germany for a similar comment judged to have minimized the Holocaust. Critics see the statement about Bruel as a reference to Nazi death camp ovens in which Jews and other victims were cremated. The video was taken off the FN's website and Ems Le Pen rebuked her father the first time she has done so in public. She said she was convinced his words had been maliciously misinterpreted but it was a political mistake for him not to have anticipated this happening. Stabbed in the back. Mr. Le Pen said there had been no courtesy in the handling of the affair in comments to French media on Tuesday. I can take direct hits to the face but not cowardly ones in the back, he said. He told French magazine in Rooks he had been stabbed in the back and told French radio station RTL that no one could withhold his freedom of expression. I have no intention of changing my attitude, he said. He has previously argued that he did not know Bruel was Jewish. The row comes at an important moment for Ems Le Pen, who lives in her father's mansion and whose party still depends on his funding, says the BBC's Christian Fraser in Paris. She is currently negotiating with other hardline leaders with the aim of forming a political group that will have more influence in the EU. National Front 1972, founded by Jean-Marie Le Pen 1983, first big election success in local poll 1986, enters Parliament 1980s, gains votes from both nationalist right and hard left 2002, Le Pen comes shock second in presidential poll beating socialist candidate. 2011, Marine Le Pen succeeds her father at head of the party. Key policies, opposed to mass immigration and free trade, seeks exit from Euro. 2014, wins European elections in France with almost 25% of the vote. Today, some anti-vaccine activists are using the same tactics against the measles, mumps and rubella or MMR series that was used in the past against DTP. The claim is that MMR, given together, rather than individually, carries some risk of causing autism in young children. In the usual fashion, very bad science has been used to show a weak correlation. The media, and in this case the celebrities Jenny McCarthy and now Jim Carrey, are reacting on an emotional level and attempting to justify their beliefs with evidence. They want autism to be someone else's fault rather than a random and complex ideology with poorly defined symptoms. Most of the science around this has been thoroughly discredited, although rarely with the same media coverage. The most famous case is the 1998 paper in the journal The Lancet. Andrew Wakefield, the primary author, was later found to be in the employ of the trial lawyers who were suing the vaccine manufacturers. Further investigation found that he had substantially interfered with and manipulated the study to create the link between MMR and autism. Ten of the twelve authors of the paper have retracted it. The publicity surrounding the Lancet paper led to an investigation of the link between autism and scheduled vaccination by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Institute of Medicine of the National Academy of Sciences, the UK National Health Services, and the Cochrane Library. All found no link between the vaccine and autism. Perhaps the best paper I have seen on the topic is a 1998 paper in the New England Journal of Medicine showing the rates of autism in the two years before 
and the two years after the introduction of the MMR vaccine into Sweden. This was a well-matched population with the minimum of confounding effects, and well controlled for important factors. The authors had no interests on either side of the debate. They found no correlation between MMR and autism in the population of Sweden. Negative results are never as exciting or emotional and have been ignored by the anti-vaxxers as tainted or part of a vast conspiracy by the vaccine manufacturers. But even those studies that show a weak correlation in a small population would fail those three factors that I have identified so far. They would not have a repeatable mechanism and they would not be able to statistically predict autism rates. I want to examine several of their arguments from the website Generation Rescue. Point 1. In 1983, autism rates were 1 in 10,000, and there were 11 vaccines in the pediatric schedule. Today, there are 36 pediatric vaccines, and autism rates are reported as high as 1 in 80 in local school districts in Oregon and New Jersey. Now, does that remind you of the Mexican lemons and traffic fatalities? Because it's pure correlation. No causation is implied. If we're going to speculate, the more likely explanation for the increase in autism rates since 1983 is an increase in diagnosis. How many other things didn't exist in 1983 but do today? Perhaps Netscape causes autism, or perhaps parachute pants suppress autism. Each of these ideas has just as much correlative merit. Point two, the US has the most bloated vaccine schedule and also the highest autism rate when compared to other countries. Again, pure correlation. We also have a very different culture, geography, diet, medical system, and educational and economic structure than those other countries. Could it be that the high ratio of psychologists capable of diagnosing and sometimes even over-diagnosing autism is responsible? Point three. Several scientific studies have shown that early vaccination is associated with other diseases, such as type 1 diabetes and asthma. That may be true. The data is very weak, and the studies are characterized by one important confounding factor. The populations with the lowest rates of vaccination tend to be either very low income or very high income thanks to this movement. An unvaccinated child, therefore, does not represent the norm. And despite some effort on the part of researchers, it's very hard to find groups of patients, called cohorts, of equal size and exactly equal in every other respect. UK pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline, GSK, has agreed to a $105 million, £63 million, settlement with 44 US states and the District of Columbia over allegations it has promoted three drugs. The drugs are asthma medication Adver and antidepressants Puxil and Wellbutrin. GSK did not admit any wrongdoing, and said the charges came from past issues. We don't feel like this is who we are today, GSK spokesperson Marianne Ryan told the BBC. These are historic matters, they relate back to the federal government settlement in 2012 so some of these events are as long ago as 14 years, she added noting that the company had already set aside money to cover the cost of the agreement. Inquiry. As part of the settlement, GSK must extend its patient first program until 2019, which prohibits financial incentives to its salespeople, and it is prohibited from paying doctors to speak about GSK's products or attend conferences. This settlement requires GSK to pay a significant penalty and imposes strong new rules designed to prevent future misrepresentations of GSK products, said California Attorney General Kamala Harris in a statement. GSK insists that many of these practices are already in place. The firm, which is one of the UK's largest companies, is also facing a criminal inquiry from the UK's serious fraud office.